going on a Disney cruise is exciting, but it can be confusing, especially when it comes to the food. Welcome back to the channel. This is Melanie from Polka Dots and Pixie Dust.com, and today we are sharing everything you need to know about dining on a Disney cruise. In general, there's a little bit of a learning curve to going on a Disney cruise, especially if it's your first time. Many people figure out most of these things by the end of their cruise, but we are hoping that this will help you be a little bit more prepared so you know exactly how dining works and are not surprised by anything. Know what's included. Almost all of the food that you'll find on a Disney cruise is included in your cruise fare. Eating in cabanas, at the quick serve booths, main dining rooms, and room service are all generally included with a few exceptions. You'll also find that soft drinks, hot cocoa, and basic drip coffee are included in your fare as well. And of all of the food that is included, you're allowed to have as much as you like. A few things that are not included are alcohol, specialty teas, coffees, and lattes from Cove Cafe, Vista Cafe, or any of the coffee shops on the Wish, as well as any specialty coffees or lattes that you order with breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Regular coffee is included, so don't get that confused. Specialty dining and adult-only restaurants like Remy, Paolo, Enchante, and any of the restaurants that are for adults only. Specialty treats from sweet shops. Things like gelato and cupcakes that are in those shops do cost you extra. Theater concessions like popcorns, drinks, and other treats. Now, you can bring stuff from around the ship to the theater, but if you buy anything at the concession stand, you will have to pay for it smoothies, fresh pressed juices, and other specialty beverages. For anything that does cost additional, 18% gratuity is automatically added to your bill. So be sure to check that out before adding anything additional so you know exactly how much you're leaving for a tip. I often hear cruisers say that they paid eight or nine dollars for their latte and that's not how much they cost. It's most likely because they didn't take into account that they were already charged 18% for gratuity. So just pay attention to your bill and leave whatever you feel is appropriate. To know Disney's rotational dining system. Disney cruise ships have three main dining rooms and use their unique rotational dining system for dinner. Each night, you'll be assigned to a restaurant and throughout the voyage, you'll rotate through the mall. Your serving staff will also rotate with you, so each night you will see the same servers during your dinner. This is really nice because your servers will learn what you like and don't like and will be able to better serve you and make recommendations for things that you actually want. It's also really nice because you get to know them and by the end, you're all kind of friends. You may be sitting with strangers. Introverts, sorry to break it to you, but Disney does seat you with other families during your dining rotation at dinner. Some people love this and they make lifelong pals, but for those who would rather not dine with other guests, you are always welcome to make a request for a private table. It's never guaranteed, but Disney will do their best to accommodate you when possible. This can be done by requesting it on the website, which I have found to actually be the least reliable method. Usually giving them a call or sending an email for the request is going to be your best bet. If once you're on board and you realize you didn't get a private table, you're still welcome to either go to guest services or the restaurant manager and see if it's something that they can accommodate for you. We always request a private table because for us dinner time is family time and sharing that time with strangers is very awkward. Plus, I'm always taking videos and pictures of my food and I don't honestly think anyone wants to see that. So I always try to have a private table when possible and I've never been denied one. Disney takes allergies very seriously. If you have an allergy or dietary request such as kosher or halal, make sure this is noted on your reservation. Disney asks that most allergies are reported at least a few weeks before the sailing so they can make sure that they have everything that you'll need. Whether you're allergic to one ingredient or multiple, Disney will make sure that is noted for the main dining room staff so they can ensure everyone has a safe dining experience. Once you're on board, you'll meet with a cast member who can help make sure breakfast and lunch are safe for you as well by taking your orders for the entire week. You can order off menu. If you're not seeing something you want at your dinner assignment, you're always welcome to ask for something off of another main dining room's menu. The same goes for any item that you want that's not on the menu. If they have it, they'll happily bring it out to you. For me, I never feel like I'm getting enough veggies on Disney cruises, so I always ask for a side of broccoli each night. And after asking for this one or two times, they always bring it out to me. I have a friend who loves lemons and they always bring her a bowl of lemons before her dinner even starts. And I have another friend whose kid loves maraschino cherries 
and they always bring out a little cup of those for the table. And just a side note, if you plan to consistently order off menu, especially from another restaurant's menu, consider adding a little extra to your serving staff's gratuity. They work really hard to make sure you're happy, and they're the ones going the extra mile to get those special items for you. If you're unable to get a dining reservation for one of the adult-only options during your sailing, try again once you get on board. There is usually a cast member designated for helping those who need to get dining reservations, and they often have last-minute spots available, or they can waitlist you if there's nothing open. Room service is available 24-7 and is included in the cost of your cruise. The first and last days are the exception, of course, as room service is not available until rooms are ready on embarkation day and ends at 1.30 a.m. on the day you disembark. You can order anything on the menu as well as a few things that are not on the menu, so if you don't see what you're looking for, just be sure to ask. We are big fans of ordering Mickey bars and enjoying them from the comfort of our room. If you want to order breakfast from room service, there is a hang tag that you can find located in the drawer of your desk inside your room. This will give you all of the options of what you can order and will also give you instructions as to when you need to have this hang tag on your door. Make sure you leave it on your doorknob and your stateroom host will take care of it for you. Then you can magically have breakfast and coffee delivered to your room the next morning. Classic foods that you may know and love even if you're an experienced Disney cruiser might be a little bit different depending on where you're sailing from. For example, this is what we got for hot chocolate in Europe. Chicken tenders were completely different in Alaska, and even things like the pizza in Europe was different as well. If you're not sailing on a standard Caribbean cruise from the East Coast, and that's what you're used to, just be prepared for other varieties of the same foods you might already be familiar with if you're sailing from somewhere else. You don't have to only eat at Cabanas on Embarkation Day. A lot of people get on the ship and head straight to Cabanas. And that's fine if that's what you want to do, but it's not the only option. One of the main dining room restaurants will always be open and you're always welcome to order from one of the poolside quick service restaurants that are open as well. No, you don't need any kind of reservation to do this. And yes, there might be a wait if you board a little bit later, but just be aware that Cabanas and Marceline Market are not the only places that you can eat. That being said, you also don't have to eat at only Cabanas or Marceline Market during breakfast and lunch. There is always at least one main dining room option open for breakfast or lunch, so just be sure to check your Disney Cruise Line Navigator app and it'll tell you who is open, when, and you can also take a look at the menu before you make a decision. Themed menus are available during select sailings. If you're on a ship that has Pirate Night, you will pretty much always get the same menu on Pirate Night, regardless of which ship you're on. The same goes for Frozen Night, for those that go to Alaska, and for longer cruises, they often have land and sea. You can expect to see these during your dining rotation. Animator's palette shows can vary depending on which ship you sail. So if you've been to one animator's palette, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've seen all of the restaurant has to offer. Many people who have their favorite ships often base part of that opinion on which shows are shown on that specific animator's palette. The pastries at Cove Cafe and Vista Cafe are free. Yeah, this isn't a huge tip, but it is something that took me two cruises to figure out before I realized that you can walk into Cove Cafe, ask for a pastry, and it won't cost you anything. Gratuities are not included. At the end of your cruise, you will be charged for gratuities for your serving staff, along with gratuities for your stateroom host. Many people get a little upset when they say that they have to pay gratuities to the staff, but this is pretty common amongst most cruise lines, not specific to Disney. You can also prepay these so that it is not a surprise on your cruise folio at the end of your trip. If you're concerned about seasickness, try some green apples. You can order these from room service, or you can ask for them at dinner from your serving staff, grab them from the poolside quick services, up on the top decks. You can request the area where you'd like to sit in the main dining room restaurants. Maybe you want to be close to the action, or maybe you prefer to be further away from it. If you want to sit by a window, these are all things that you can request on the Disney Cruise website before your cruise. And if you get on the cruise and you find out that where you're sitting is not ideal for your family, you can always request to be moved. If they have availability, they will try to accommodate you. Let them know if you're celebrating something. If you're celebrating something, they'll often try to make a little bit of a big deal about it. They'll bring you out a special dessert, usually with a candle if it's your birthday, and they'll sing happy birthday to you. It's just a nice little way to celebrate on board a Disney cruise. 
Cabanas and Marceline Market can be notoriously difficult to find a seat in during busier times. You don't have to eat your food inside the restaurant. You are welcome to take your food back to your room, or you can try the small sections located right outside of the restaurant where there are tables and chairs. You don't have to eat inside the restaurant, so if you can't find a seat, just leave and find somewhere else to sit. Hopefully this video has helped you understand a little bit better about how dining on Disney Cruise Line works, so you have no surprises the next time that you board. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.